amazing record company that was really behind the band um, long term. Driving um, to work, record and headed to Think Loud Studios, listening to Eddie K. On Sirius XM Volume, uh, that's Channel 106. And you met, and your wife saw you for the first time that day at mm -hmm. Woodstock. You didn't meet yeah. that day. We didn't. We met a couple months later, but she told me, yeah, you're up on the screen. And she's uh, using college and working with her girl girlfriends out um, at a stand and, and uh, saw me for the first time on the screen. And I said, like I said in the liner, she must have liked what she saw. Dude, that's 20, a good, that's a good show. Later, 21. <laughs> 22 years later. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good show right there. <laughs> so, so Woodstock, Woodstock was very, yeah, fruitful for me. And now the Woodstock, the Woodstock, the, the audio is going to be available for the first time with this Throwing Copper 25th yeah. anniversary edition. You guys just mixed it recently. That's right, Chad mixed it. Chad Taylor mixed it at our studio um, in New York and did a great job. It was just really fun to unearth that. You know, I, I don't think we even realized we had the tapes so pretty recently and so wow, this would be so cool to uh, to include with you know what we're what we're doing with the album, the, the reissue. There's also three um, new songs on the Throne Copper 25th anniversary edition that's coming out. Wait, um, brand new songs? songs? Actually, B sides from the Throne Copper sessions that we just couldn't fit on the CD. Um, so I think we had tracked the 17 songs and we only put 14 on there. So there's a song called "Hold Me Up," which I believe will be the single, um, which is just great. It was it's actually been out before. It was in back in here and make a porno. <laughs> but it didn't go it didn't go on the, the soundtrack so we we still have never released it and the fans have always anyway when can we get that and so um, um, we were putting that on a song called Tuscohanna which of course the go to our Pennsylvania roots and, uh, and a song called We Deal in Dreams so pretty exciting stuff for the fans you know the Woodstock recording and then these three new songs or new old songs um, a lot of great stuff in there yeah people forget you know in the CD era there was like you know, there was only it was like vinyl. There was X amount of bandwidth. You could only fit so yeah. much on a CD. Yeah, it's like fifty minutes or something, and that's if you smush it all in there. You know, it's like so. Uh, yeah, it was a different time. He's still you know thinking about albums in that in that space and what they were going to feel like when you played them. You know, from front to back, and we still hold on to that aesthetic. I don't know how much it matters to you, but we're we're a diehard for the album for sure. So back to the Woodstock set, you just said um, you didn't even know you had the tapes. And again, it was 1994, so they literally were tapes. Uh, you know, yeah. how, how much how much did you have to sort of like sweeten them and make them ready for the uh, the digital age that we live in? Well, you know, Chad, uh, you know, thing there, he's a really great producer. And he's produced actually the last uh, EP we did, the original song we just put out, um, our last, well, you know, latest release. So he's become a great producer over the years and just dug into it and... And you know, there was just, I, I heard the, the really rough versions of it, and it's just the energy was so incredible. Um, but he went in there and, and did his thing, and it sounds even better. Yeah, so, Eddie. Ed, Throw you know, some love to CT. Period, you, you, you <laughs> become one of the biggest bands in the world, and you had some of the biggest fans in the world. I mean, we talked about this, that, that Bruce Springsteen said he was a live fan. When I talked to Chad Gracie, he told me Neil Peart, you know, had become a huge, that, that he said that he was, that, that Chad was one of the um, drummers that he most looked up to. I mean, there were so many people, like Michael Stipe called you mm -hmm. and said he was he a did. big fan. He did. I mean, yeah, it was such an incredible couple years there and beyond because, you know, we we just met so many of our heroes that you know really are, were the reason that we were inspired enough to be in a band in the first place. From REM, the guys in U2, to Peter Gabriel gave us you know a spot on the Womad tour, and it was just uh, yeah incredible to to uh, to meet these people that these artists that were so influential to us, and then have them be nice to us and like us. Couldn't ask for more. Yeah, and remember if, when we talked a few weeks ago, you mentioned that. Um uh, Goodbye, Mr. McKenzie was on your tour back in the day yeah. with uh, Shirley Manson, and then I spoke to her a few days later after we spoke, and and she was just like talking about how important that tour was with Live. I mean, do you do you do feel? I mean, as we talk about your co-headlining tour with Bush that's coming up this summer, what, mm -hmm. did you feel like there was a responsibility? to opening acts like you wanted to pick opening acts that you could bring along with you on tour and that you could give your blessing to because you know the ramones did that to you the ramones took live that on tour yeah we opened for the ramones we opened for the pixies and like we had so many cool spots that were so inspirational for us 
at, you know, in those days. Um, so yeah, we, oh gosh, we've had some, especially, well, speaking of that era in particular, I mean, yeah, from Goodbye to Mr. McKenzie and Shirley to, to, uh, Mick Chestnut opened the tour for us. We ended up in 95 having, um, our package with PJ Harvey was really, really probably still my favorite all time tour. Cause oh, that's right. I remember that tour. That's right. Yeah. And, um, so, oh my gosh, yeah, so many. But yeah, I mean, and, and, and the Goodbye Mr. McKenzie and Shirley connection really was, again, being part of this really cool record company in the early 90s, two radioactive records, um, that signed up, gave us our break. And, um, so many cool artists on there. But yeah, Shirley was, we, we had a great time on that tour. And, and, um, yeah, and it led to garbage, which, which is crazy. Awesome. Well, we have a, t a tweet from Socks Forever saying, one of the best shows I saw in the early 90s for 10 bucks, um, Bobcat Goldway opening for live. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it was like, I think it was a college gig. I think it was down in Florida, if I'm not mistaken. I remember that because I loved him. I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> Yeah, one of my all-time favorite shows. I was just 16 years old. I, I didn't even have my license yet, but my, my high school girlfriend drove. It was our first show at Jones Beach here in, in the New York area. It was uh, uh -huh. two, two of my favorite artists at the time, you guys live, and PJ Harvey opened up for you guys. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That tour was so much fun. Um, and speaking of Jones Beach, we will be back there again this year with Bush uh, in June. Wow. I remember when I was in Boston. Uh, you guys played uh, our radio station at the time, the River Rave, and uh, we're, I was interviewing you. We were sitting on your bus, and I was saying, "You got any new music coming up?" And you're like, "Oh, I'm working on this thing." And you like sang the Dolphins Cry acoustic, and I was just like, "This is nuts, dude!" <laughs> oh, <laughs> good. You know, people don't realize that your biggest hit, Lightning Crashes, they didn't even want it to be, the record company didn't want, well, the record company did. It was it your manager who didn't want to release it? And he yeah. said, I'll release that over my dead body? <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a consensus of, well, because I had been trumpeting the song, you know, after we got the main mixes back and I listened to the whole album and I thought, this is really great, but man, you know, Lightning Crashes, this song's really special and I know it's long and it's got this crazy arrangement and so I'm you know, always talking about this song and, and there was just this consensus in the, the sort of business end of things like, no way, that'll never be a thing that's way too long. It takes too long to get to the chorus, you know, all that stuff. And I thought, okay, you know, fine. And we went out and of course we put out, you know, throwing the drama first and then I alone was out for a while. And then just out of nowhere, it was like, hey, we're, you know, MCA's going with Lightning and Crashes next. And I thought, here we go. That's, I was my dream that that song would, would get exposed, you know, out there and, um, and then we made this beautiful video with uh, Jake Scottford, and that was really the, the video and the song and the era of MTV at that time. It, it was just, we became literally like, we were in everybody's house 40 times a week for yeah. months and months, right to the point of nausea, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, we were, just gonna, we were just gonna ask you about that because a lot of bands at that time, in particular, when MTV was huge, uh, a lot of bands, you know, they benefited from it, but they didn't really enjoy the process of making videos. How was that for you? We tried to. I mean, I, I I think we made, you know, I look back when it was such a huge part of what everybody was doing. The video element was just, uh, you know, next to making the record was such a huge piece for everybody at that time because there were just so many, you know, spots to get it played, especially MTV and it's it made it. Um, so we always, you know, I, I actually always enjoyed the process. You know, some, some were hits and some were misses. You, did, you always ended up, you didn't really know exactly how it was going to come out. So sometimes you go, eh, oh, it's okay. But boy, we made some great ones. And so, uh, yeah, we got a couple through that for sure. I think the live performance, I mean, it's funny. There's people who are younger that will say, how do you say it, Lori? Is it live? Is it live? And <laughs> for me, it was always live because that was the underscore of what everything you did was about the live performance. I mean, you came out of CBGB. We did. And, you know, it's still to the same. It's funny. I talked to Chad Taylor the other day about it. It's like we always, you know, as much as we get into making new music and and all the other stuff that goes on with, uh, you know, bands, uh, business-wise and touring and all, you know, it, it's our center of gravity, even after all these years, it's still, what are we doing on stage? You know, um, how does it feel? How do we make it more fun? How do we, how do we get, you know, just how, how do we feel more confident with this? And, well, and we're always, him and I, since we were kids, it's just, it's always the, you know, we love writing music and putting the music out, but there's still this, yeah, there's always been this, center of, of just going back to the, sh to the show and how to um, how to make that live experience first of all you know impactful for us on stage because we know that if we're feeling it then it'll it'll get out there and it'll it'll transmit itself but um, yeah it's definitely you know a good name for this band because we are 
uh, through thick and thin, always going back to that, always going back to what it feels like on stage and how the fans are experiencing it. And I just wanted to read you a real quick tweet from uh, one of our friends. Uh, this is Ed Kowalczyk of Live. Of course, Eric says, uh, Ed from Live changed my life after suffering an awful car accident in high school. Oh. His music and spirituality got me through. Wow. I'm happy for that. I love, thank you for sharing that. Well, it's interesting. I mean, he mentions your, your music and, and your spirituality. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I think it may have been Patrick or, Gr or Chad Gracie that I was talking to for the liner notes, and, and they said they wanted to draw a difference between being political and being spiritual. And they said live yes. was spiritual uh, about the yes. human condition, not necessarily mm -hmm. about being political. Yeah, it's true. You know, I, it, you know, throughout the years, I'll, I'll have, I'll have, you know, of course, like anybody, I have my feelings about, you know, politics and all that, and I express them. But it, I've always known that my my true musical calling and what I'm really drawn to doing is this sort of like politics of the soul, or you know, like kind of really, it's like this whole idea that you know, you change yourself and then the world changes. It's not the other way around. And so I've always been focused on. I've always felt like that was what I was good at, and that there were way better people for. There was Rage Against the Machine had that locked down. I did, that was, you know, we were good. You know, they, that was bad. And, and we were our, um, this more inward band that, you know, was nonetheless visceral and all that and, and really, um, passionate about it, but just an inward searching band that, you know, um, we're trying to come up with these, this transformation in ourselves to, that we felt was really important, not only as musicians, but as human beings, you know, and, um, and we found so many people and still do, you know, still are finding them that share that that vision and, and have a deep relationship with it and uh, and um, have made our music the soundtrack for their own journey and um, it's just really really beautiful yeah I don't know White Discussion's pretty political bro in the best possible way I think and 25 years yeah, later yeah, what it I still means it. I dance around it yeah it's, still, <laughs> it's really fun to sing now you know because it, it just you know yeah it really did kind of um, in some ways for me a little bit prefigure the, the even though I, of course the different era um technologically and all that but now when i sing it i just you know you, it, it really feels timely with all the all the crazy you know craziness out there and all, how much information there is compared to even the early 90s but that's what was bad enough to sing about it then and now it's, like, it's even more overwhelming so let's get on stage and we put all these you know i'll put all the lyrics and all these all this like really hard-hitting kind of headline and stuff behind us in the show and it really feels like the song could have come out yesterday Look, I sucked him in, Lori. He was trying to dance around it, but I sucked him right in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are right. <laughs> well, I know you're going out on the road with Bush, 25th anniversary of Throwing Copper. And you know what I was thinking, Ed? Five years ago, I saw you celebrate the 20th anniversary of this record yeah. on your own playing you were a one-man band you were playing all yeah. of these songs on stage alone and as much i thought i alone i thought you did an incredible job mm -hmm. but thank freaking god we get to see you perform these songs together as a group yeah. again you know and chad tiller said yeah, it, it really took is. a lot to, to come through this but i commend you on coming through this thank i you. mean are you amazed now as you look back like Wow, we should have done that earlier. Or did you have to make up with the band? Did it did it take this long to do it properly? It did. You know, um, it's life. You know, you just never know what it's going to throw you in. We, you know, of course, our our, our hiatus turned into a, a a breakup, and then you know, all the the the, the years that we were apart really um, have um, now landed us here in this place of just this incredible gratitude, you know, because I think we're all still like, wow, we can't believe we're back together, let alone just in time to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Throwing Copper. We're making great new music. I think we're all just still benching ourselves, you know, every night. And, it, and there's this, it, you can sense that on stage. We're still really intense on stage, but there's a joy and a confidence there that I know would be there at this level without what we went through. So there you go. You know, you never know. <laughs> well, it's a perfect album, and I'm excited for this tour. Really excited. Yeah, that, I mean, that's sick. Yeah. Bush, Bush, and Our Lady Peace, too. You got no excuse not to go see this, Bill. That is really, you, just, you know, there's it's something wrong with you if you don't go to see this show. No, I'm just putting that yeah, out. Come on out. <laughs> well, I will be there, but we'd love to have you here in person. Come come with the guys. Absolutely. Bring the guys. Maybe we have a brand new fishbowl here. We'd love to have you perform. Oh, come, cool. come. Absolutely. We'd love to. That'd be great. All right, dude. God bless. Ed Kowalczyk, thanks for, thanks for getting up early, too. We know rock star time is uh, it's a whole other thing, a whole other conversion oh, table.
I, I got four kids, so I was like six. Man. Like, that's gone. Those days are over. <laughs> go, go with the facade, man. Go with the facade. <laughs> well, we love you, love you lots, and it's been a wonderful thing to be on this journey and see you all these years come through. All right, take care. We'll absolutely do that. All right, Ed Kowal, Jacob Live. Thanks for checking in. Yes. Taking a quick break. We'll be right back on feedback. in just a moment. All right, y'all, you got the exclusive broadcast right here. Uh, I know that the guys from Bush are doing some of the press also announcing the tour. So we got live Bush and Our Lady Peace on tour. All the tour dates are up. If you go to Live Nation or go to Freaks for Live, uh, go to those websites. All the tours are, uh, all the tickets are available. To be honest with you, I don't even know how to pick your, uh, to buy a ticket to go to a rock show, which is pretty hilarious. I've never actually, have I ever done that? No, I don't think I have. It's one of the things when you've been a rock band your whole life, you don't actually go and buy tickets to shows. Anyway, uh, we're super excited. You know, the stuff that I can tell you from my angle that we're going to really try and do is first of all, we're going to play some of the more obscure songs from throwing copper for sure. We're going to get the hit on some of those. I know Chad Gracie is thoroughly intimidated by the pace of uh, stage, the song stage. Uh, but then we have also been working on some cool surprises to put in the set to shake things up. And uh, we just played a show in Mexico with the guys from Bush. It was great to meet uh, and, and rekindle with their band. Um, I, I got to, in, in, in fact, Robin, their drummer, and I, and Robin from Live, we were all at the bar together very late. I don't know if they'll even remember it, but it was a very good time. Their crew and their staff is super great. So we already know all these, you know, obviously we've known the guys in Bush since the time we were, you know, quite young guys. So this is like a family reunion of sorts of two nineties era bands. They're celebrating their 25th anniversary. And, uh, so we're doing the same and, uh, I can't wait. I'm literally going into the studio to work on some, uh, I'm actually learning some songs, believe it or not, that we haven't played in years. So, uh, get your tickets, come on out, watch the show. We can't, like, literally, I can't remember three tours in a row where the members of Live, Chad, Patrick, Ed, myself, and, of course, Zach and Robin, were so excited to play music and to play songs. Like, uh, you know, today, Ed's on the radio doing that. I'm sitting outside our studio right now, about to go in and, you know, work on some uh, material for the summer tour. And, uh, like, we're in full motion. There's tons of snow around here, but we know spring is coming, which means summer festival season. Of course, you know, there's a European tour. And I, I know I see everybody from all the countries, especially Brazil, asking about shows. We are working on that stuff. It just, you know, it's a big, big world. And uh, sometimes it takes uh, some time to work with the agency and management, etc., to make that stuff happen. But we, trust me, we hear you. We know that you're out there. Um, I know I saw the one guy wrote from Indonesia. Boy, wouldn't that be fun? That would be awesome to get to there. Uh, it's funny. I follow that girl, Josh. Uh, 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 oh my God, why am I going to forget her name right now? Uh, anyway, I'm sorry. My old age is showing. Although that damn hair is hanging in there somehow. So anyway, uh, live fans, love you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening to Ed. I'm sure that they'll do a replay of that. That was uh, in super huge thanks to Sirius XM for helping us announce the tour. And I know that the guys from Bush are going to be on K-Rock Radio uh, talking more about it. So live, Bush, Our Lady Peace. Uh, big Our Lady Peace fan too. So super excited to have those guys join. Um, and... Uh, I have seen a, an outline of the of the tour of of the shows, and they're some of my favorite venues to play. And uh, you know, I I know that we're going to be back at Jones Beach in New York. I know that we're going to do we're going to do the Greek Theater in L.A. I love to play the Greek; it's an amazing room. 
We're going to be back in Camden. Uh, we're in Homedale, New Jersey. I mean, this is going to be an incredible summer tour. And uh, thanks, everybody, for always supporting me, supporting Ed, supporting Chad, supporting Patrick. And uh, I I'm telling you, this this is really, really an exciting season for us. And I can't believe the Throwing Copper is 25 freaking years old. Ed talked a little bit about the uh, about the package that we're putting together. I had the honor of mixing Woodstock 94. Uh, yeah, I was really nervous to hear how the band sounded at that time, but as it turns out, we sound pretty daggone good. And so I'm really excited to share it with the fans. Peace. Have a great day. I'm going to actually go in and work. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.